My name is Melvin Jones, and I'm currently a gardener for the city of Los Angeles in the Port of Los Angeles, which I have been for the last 20 years. And before that, I was a stuntman in Hollywood. I am a combat veteran of the Vietnam era. I served in Vietnam with the 101st Airborne Division from December 67 until November 68. When I initially returned, I was kind of at my wit's end as to, you know, what I was going to do. And a piece of dirty newspaper blew onto my foot and I picked it up and started reading for some reason. It was an article about stuntmen. I had never heard of a stuntman. I had no idea what they did or anything of that nature. But I kept this piece of paper. I folded it and put it in my pocket. And I used to visit this community center. And so the director, a guy named Chester Hammond, he said, what are you going to do? You know, you just returned from Vietnam and going from job to job, you're kind of drifting. And I said, well, I want to be a stuntman. So I pulled this piece of paper out of my pocket and showed it to him. He said, oh, I know those guys. I can introduce you to them. So I went over on a Saturday morning, introduced myself, and they said, well, you know, show us what you can do. I said, well, I don't know what to do. You know, I mean, I don't know what the duties of a stuntman are. They said, well, you tumble from one end of this park to the other. And if you can do that without stopping, we'll help train you. We'll give you the benefit of our knowledge and, you know, you can work with us. And that's how I got started. That was this one person, uh, Benny Dobbins, who was well-known in the industry. He took a liking to me, he kind of took me under his wing. There was this show called The Mod Squad, and he introduced me to this guy who was running this show called Ronnie Rondell. And he asked me if he would hire me, you know, in some, you know, give me my first job so I could get, you know, my union card and get time on the set to see how things actually transpired. My very first job was on September 27th, 1971. I never forget that day, you know, and that was my initial, that was the very first stunt. That became my whole world, day and night. I worked on a TV series called SWAT, down at Cabrillo Beach. We did police shoots, shootouts, and it was always, most of the majority of the time, I was always a villain, which is, which is fine. That's how, you know, you, you get hired a lot, you know, to do that, so it's not me, you know, too. Unless you, you know, you're doubling the actor. I doubled Richard Pryor once, I doubled Denzel Washington once, I had doubled, I mean, so many people once, and then there were others that was on a steady basis. We did a lot of work for Canada. I, I worked on a couple of Chuck Norris films, too. I did Delta Force, where I was doubling Steve James on there. We also did Weekend at Burnett's Part Two. We did the American Ninja movies and the Philippines and South Africa, and went to Israel on Delta Force. That was the one good thing. It was like a paid vacation to me. It was not work, it was a paid vacation, despite the risk. You know, because the risk, I mean, that was the job, it was risky. I worked on a move for Walter Hill called uh, Southern Comfort. I did dog attacks, we attacked by Rod Wallace in the swamps of Louisiana. We did booby traps coming out of the water with spikes. I did car crashes and explosions. It was an adventure to me because I prided myself and every time I did something, I always analyzed exactly what I did and uh, the reason that it worked and what could have gone wrong. You know, there are little dings and everything like that, but I mean, you know, just kind of shrug those off and keep on stepping. Only once did I really have a bad experience with, I mean, as, as far as the danger element. Well, we initially went to South Africa to do American Ninja Part Two. We completed American Ninja, and they were doing another film called Mercenary Fighters. They didn't have a lot of experience, and they wanted people with experience. And so we were there, so they hired us to work on this film. We were on a truck and that was an attack. The rebels were supposed to throw a hand grenade onto the bed of the truck and we were supposed to leap off as if it blew us off. They didn't have the proper equipment, so they just put the explosions in big plastic bags on the bed of the truck. And the moment I stepped up on the, the truck, I knew that it was going to be bad. So I turned to leap off and that's when it exploded. It exploded prematurely, they were talking on the radio. And I was like, oh God. This is the way I'm going to die. When I hit the ground, I mean, it blew me about, I guess about 30 feet through the air. The grass caught fire all around us. And once I realized, you know, that I wasn't dead, I still knew that I was in a bad way because I could smell my burning flesh. It took about, about three years because I had to learn to, you know, to use my facial muscles again to learn to smile and they had to do releases and things like that. So it was interesting, it was a growing experience because I did it all. I was afraid of becoming addicted to morphine and so I did it all without taking any kind of painkillers or anything. But now that I'm away from it, and I've been away from it for, for 20 years now, 
I think that that was a blessing because it probably saved my body. You know, because working here in the port and uh, the variety of things that we do, sometimes it's very demanding physically. And I can still, you know, do those things without too much of a sweat.